My question for today is that I want to know the difference between the motor and the generator. Well, thanks for that question, Sapang. We're going to quickly read it again for our viewers at home. It asks, what is the difference between a motor and a generator? Now, in order for us to be able to answer it, we need to take a look at what does electrodynamics mean? And that's a specific relationship. It's a relationship between three things. It's between electricity, as well as magnetism and a mechanical phenomena. Now, we're gonna take a look at two electromechanical systems, of which are the motors and the generators. Now, let's start off with our motors. Motors, the most important difference concerning to generators is the fact that we're going to have electrical energy being converted into mechanical energy. Okay, now Portia, please tell us, give us any example of a motor that you can think of. A hairdryer. Yes, that's a very good example. Good, so a hairdryer is an example of a motor where we typically plug it in, it receives electrical energy and it's converted into mechanical energy where the fan then rotates. Okay, now also, we are going to be taking a look at DC and AC current. Now DC stands for direct current and AC would stand for your alternating current. Now if you take a look here at the specific symbol given here for the DC, I'm using a battery that's one of your best examples of DC current. Note our long line is our positive line and the short one is the negative. For DC, this positive and negative is going to stay fixed throughout the operation of this battery or cell. They're not going to swap around. Alternating current, on the other hand, is going to swap, swap around. So we're going to have positive and negative, and then suddenly it's going to swap around and become negative, positive, and then positive, negative again. So that's alternating current, and that's how it's different then from our direct current. Now we're also going to referring to the flow of our current. In our previous two lessons, we've mentioned electron flow. And if we take a look at our ooh, battery over here, we'll note the short line is negative, and our electrons always flow away from the negative towards the positive. But in our motors and generators, we're more going to focus on conventional current. Conventional current is obviously the opposite. It's now going to go from positive to negative. So as we said, when we're going to be focusing on motors and generators and the direction of the current, etc., conventional current, positive to negative, that's what you need to take a look at. Okay, now let's quickly just go on and refer to our DC motor here. Now we'll note, we're going to take a look at DC motors and AC generators. Now, if we take a look at our specific example given there on your screens, let's take a look at the components that we see there. We find that there is a battery, which we now know is indicating to us our DC source. It's connecting to connecting wires, which on the other hand is connected to carbon brushes. Now, to these carbon brushes that's fixed to the connecting wires, there is contact to what we call split ring commutators. Now, you'll note that if you take a look here at the sketch, they are basically a ring that has been split. So that's how can we call it split ring commutator. So it's a ring that's split, so it's a split ring commutator. So it's basically two circles or two halves of a circle. And these split ring commutators are not making contact with the brushes. They are free to rotate between our two brushes. But our split ring commutators are though fixed to the coil that you'll find here between my two magnets. Now this coil or amateur in our case is just one loop, but it is an actual fact if you go over to take a look at motors in real life, many loops of this coil and that just ensures even rotation. Now this coil or amateur is found between two magnets, of which the north side of the one magnet is then facing the south side of the other magnet and between those two we're going to find a magnetic field. Now we are also going to be taking a closer look at some of the functions of these components, starting off with our split ring commutator. Now its most important function is the fact that it's going to reverse the current inside the coil. Now this is important. If we take a look at our diagram over here, note though that the current here coming from our DC power source is going to be fixed. That's not going to change. But within this coil, this current here will rotate and change direction. Okay, so that's one of the first functions of it. The second function that it's also going to be having is it's going to maintain a constant rotation in one direction. So it's not going to go clockwise and then anti-clockwise. It's going to continue doing clockwise or anti-clockwise rotation smooth and evenly throughout. The next one we're going to take a look at is your carbon brushes. Now our carbon brushes though, they are in fact making sure there's electrical contact between your connecting wires, which is then your power source at the end, and it also ensures that there's going to be free rotation of my split ring commutators as they move around 
just making contact every now and again with the brushes that are though not fixed to the brushes. Okay, now let's go and see what actually underlines my motors and this is what we call the motor effect. That basically means if you're going to have a current that's going to flow inside of a magnetic field area, there's going to be a magnetic force which we're going to be seeing as our mechanical phenomena occurring. And this is then what makes the motor rotate. Now from here onwards, let's go over to our generators. As we said, we are also going to be taking a look at our AC generators. They're going to convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. Now do take note that pretty much they look exactly the same as our motors, except for if we take a look here at our split ring commutators, they are not found in our AC generators anymore. We now have what we call a slip rings that is now fixed to the brushes. Now remember previously, we said that our split ring commutators, they are not fixed to our brushes in the motors. But if we take a look at our generators, those slip rings are though fixed to the brushes. And that will make that in our case, the connecting wires will keep on rotating with the coil as it moves. Okay, now let's quickly go on over to taking a further look at what actually underlines our generators. And this is the electromagnetic induction, where we're going to convert our mechanical energy over to electrical energy. So it's the opposite of taking a look at our motors. Now, electromagnetic induction, as you've learned in grade 11 already, it's when a conductor is moved in a magnetic field, there will be a change in the magnetic field, also known as a change in magnetic flux. And this is going to end up causing or inducing an EMF and this then causes current to flow inside of your circuit. Okay, now let's quickly just briefly take a look at the functioning here of our AC generator. You'll note though that this specific coil inside this magnetic field is going to be rotating 90 degrees and then 180, then again 270 and 360 throughout. And this specific rotation and the direction in which it's going to be rotating is going to be underlined by what we call the right hand motor rule, which going to, we're going to be taking a look at a bit later. To the teacher is, how do I determine whether the coil of the motor turns clockwise or anti-clockwise? Well, thanks for that question, Rafinsi. Let's just repeat it for our viewers at home. She asked, how would I know whether a motor is rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise? Now, in order to determine that, we're going to take a look at our right-hand rule. Now, I know the textbooks has got many different rules. There's your right-hand motor rule, and then there's your left-hand rule, and you have to have everything at 90-degree angles. And I know that's very confusing. So I'm going to teach you a simpler way of doing this. Now, we are going to still use our right hand for both the motors and the generators with a slight difference between the two. Okay. So starting off with our right hand rule for our motors, we're going to keep our four fingers flat. Note though that your thumb though is going to be 90 degrees to these four fingers. Okay, and then your four fingers as they are flat is going to indicate your magnetic field line. Starting with north at your wrist and then your tip of the fingers is south. Now when in doubt, remember tip of fingers is south. Okay, good. Then we're going to take a look at our thumb. Now our thumb, which is 90 degrees to this magnetic field line, is going to go from positive at the wrist side to negative at the tip. So remember positive here and then tip is negative. And then the last one is basically going to be the force. Now just like you would smack somebody with your hand, 90 degrees out from your palm you're going to have your force. Now let's go and apply this to a motor example. Now you'll see there's a diagram on your screens. First off we need to first see where is our direction of the current. Now our current conventional wise will go from positive all the way to negative. And I suggest that this is one of the first things that you do when you see your diagram, go and put in the direction inside your coil so that you know exactly in which area you're going to have the current flowing up or down. Now we are always going to be making use of these sides of the coil when determining our direction. And I'm specifically going to take a look now at AB. So we can see in AB the current is going to flow from A to B. So we're going to take our thumb pointing from A, because this is my positive, to B which is the negative. And then we'll need to take a look at our magnetic field. Now our magnetic field is according to our diagram is north on this side, and this is where the wrist is. Tip of the fingers lies to this side. And now we'll note though that my palm points downwards. That means that section AB is going to go into the paper and that's going to cause for us an anti-clockwise rotation. Now let's quickly see what's the difference between our generators instead of our motors. So we still have our hand that's going to indicate the four flat fingers, the direction of the magnetic field, north to south. 
But now we're going to get the biggest difference. And this is going to come in when we take a look at the direction of the current. It's going to be now from negative to positive. So now it swaps around. It's not positive to negative anymore. It's negative to positive. And then we're still going to have the direction of the force 90 degrees out from your palm. OK, let's quickly take a look here at an example. So if we see this case, our coil is going to rotate clockwise. So that means section AB is going to come up out of the paper, keeping our palm upwards. Note that we're going to have north and south and then our thumb points towards us. Now remember, the at our wrist is negative, tip of the finger is positive. So we're going to have negative as B, positive for A, but we always indicate the direction conventional wise, which is positive to negative. Yeah.